pleasure to introduce a fabulous scientist, uh, Grant Hank. He is the star of the Grant Hank TV show. You are familiar with that. He is a chemist by training. He got interested in science. I think he's going to share some of that with you, how he came to be a scientist and how he now is very interested in working with young people in particular and helping you to understand science and see what science is all about. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. You sound like a bunch of scientists out here. Nice and boring, nice and ready to fall asleep out here. But I'm here to do one thing, rock the house and break the Guinness Book of World Records. So let's go! I my DJ over here. Y'all didn't know this scientist traveled with a DJ, did y'all? Didn't know that, did you? Didn't know that you right here, you are with the heavyweight champion of science. heavyweight champion of science right here. Put along with me some special guests. I have some special guests in the building. They are from the Indianapolis Coast of Chile's. Come on up on stage, ladies. Come on up here. They are coming to rock the house with the scientists. So not only are these ladies cheerleaders, but each and every one of them are also scientists as well. I want the children right now for science. Are y'all ready to jam? All right, here we go. Cheerleaders, are you ready to cheer? All right, here we go. Let me hear you say. What y'all want him to do? Every day I'm shuffling. do some science here. Now, this experiment here is so interesting that uh, I'll tell you a story of how I became a scientist. I went to uh, high school and when it came time to go to college, I had no plans, wasn't interested. I was playing baseball. I was a center fielder for my high school. And I thought, you know, that's it. I had an, an advisor who said, you know, I think you should go to college. So I said, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. So she said, uh, I need you to fill these papers out. You fill these papers out and bring them back. We'll submit them, we'll see what we can do. So I got the papers and I started filling them out. I was ready to go to college until I got to the bottom line. And on that bottom line was one number that knocked me out, $35 for the application fee. And at that time, I could not afford the application fee, so I decided I wasn't going to go to college. And each day that I would come to school, my advisor would be there greeting me, saying, did you fill the papers out? And I, told, I, I just didn't want to tell her I didn't have the money. So I said, well, I'm going to get to them. My mom needs to sign them, et cetera. So she said, I know what it is. She said, do you need money? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, uh, I'll pay the fee. You fill the application out. So I filled the application out, and then two months, three months later, they put a banner up as we began to practice for graduation. And on that banner was the names of all the people who got accepted into college. And my name was on that banner. So I went to, I got accepted at the University of Pittsburgh. And at the University of Pittsburgh, I said, you know what? I need to pick a career. And uh, I said, well, you know, let me try this math, physics, chemistry, something. I need something technology-based. So I picked chemistry. I felt that anything I pick, I could do it. I, I don't care what it is, I'm going to learn how to. And I went in, I first I signed up for chemistry, 
first day of class, I strolled into the lab. I had my cool cap on, my leather jacket. I was the Fines back then, if y'all remember that. So when I rolled in, I opened the door for the classroom and looked in. It was 350 people in the classroom. I'm the only African American. So I'm looking and I'm looking. Now here's how it works. So we get to studying, I'm getting to learn my science and doing the best I can do. Comes time to take the first test. I stroll in, I'm ready to take the first test. Sit down. First of all, what position do you think I sat in the room? Front, middle, or back? back. Who thinks I sat in the front? Who thinks I sat in the middle? Who thinks I sat in the back? Man, I sat in the front, I'm all back. I sat in the front of the room. So I start taking the test, and I get the test back. I think I busted, I walked out of there. Then I get the test back. How many of y'all think I passed my first test? Very good. How many of y'all think I failed? Well, I failed my first test. I was devastated. I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. I thought I did the best I could do, and I failed that test. So then I started studying really hard, and I went back. It's time to take the second test. How many of y'all think I passed? How many of y'all think I failed? Well, first of all, second of all, what position of the room do you think I sat in? Front, middle, or back? Who thinks I sat in the front? Very good. Who thinks I sat in the middle? Who thinks I sat in the back? Man, I sat in the middle. I'm not sitting in the front no more. No way. I'm blending in. So I took the test, and I get my test back. I failed again. Yeah, it was sad. I was devastated. I couldn't believe it. Two tests in a row. I said, okay, I know what it is. My brain is not strong enough. So in order for me to learn science, I have to attach my brain to another brain that's smarter than mine. Right? Sounds logical, right? So I attach my brain to my professor. Now, how many of you in here besides me have ever had a professor or teacher in your illustrious careers that you did not like? Very good, put your hands down. Now, since we're at the NSTA, how many of you have had a science teacher that did not like you? Very good. See, it works both ways. We have a balanced equation here. So, long story short, my professor did not like me. And guess what? I did not like him. And guess why? Because he did not like me. Now how silly was that? We could have went back and forth. But I realized one word that the young people, you have to realize this word. I want you to take it home, research it. It's called humility. Let me hear y'all say humility. humility. Humility is the most critical word that you can master and use. So here's what I did. I went to my professor. I said, sir, I'm not learning chemistry the way you're teaching. I don't see those molecules moving. I don't see the equations balancing. I don't see the stoichiometry. I need help. So here's what he did. He looked at me like, Psh, and I looked at him like, Psh, let's have it. He said, I'll make a deal with you. I need you to come to my laboratory 7.30 in the morning. I will tutor you. Now, anybody who's ever been to college knows 7.30 is murder. And I got up. Every day, I, every other day, went to his lab. Because if I fail this third test, it's over. You know, three tests, you failed, you over. So I strolled into the lab, strolled into the, 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 the room. It's 350 people still waiting. What position do you think I sat in the room? Front, middle, or back? Who thinks the front? Cool. Who thinks the middle? My confidence was up. Who thinks the back? You're correct. I sat in the back of the room. Because if I fail, I'm out the back door. I'm gone. See you later. So I sit down, take this test, and I'm feeling good. And guess what? How many of y'all think I failed? How many of y'all think I passed? That's right, I passed! I passed with a C, but I passed. Got out of that classroom, now I'm just